everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to convert audio loops into patterns that you can fully edit and sequence in the step sequencer. So in a previous video I did, someone asked, can it convert a regular WAV file to MIDI or pattern? The answer is yes, but the answer is sort of like a two-part answer. In Logic 10.6 and prior, even actually going all the way back to Logic 9 and I believe back to Logic 8, you can convert any audio that has transient material in it, actually you can convert any audio to a sampler track. Uh, it just works better if there are distinguishable transients in the loop or sample or whatever it is. And now with the new convert MIDI region to pattern region functionality that's been added to Logic 10.7, we can take this a step further and convert those sample instruments over to pattern regions so we can create sequences in the step sequencer. So I have a few different loops and samples here. I just have an individual snare sample. I'm going to come back to that one at the very end. I have this topper here, just a drum loop, and then I have another drum loop here. And then I've got a synth loop. So the initial snare sample, I'm just gonna mute that. But what you can do is you can convert any of these audio regions into sampler instruments. And I think the best way to do this, if you're looking to create sequences out of these loops, is to turn on flex and then just turn on slicing mode for each of these. Now we're not actually going to manipulate these at all. I'm just using this for the transient markers. Now one thing you might opt to do is to edit your transient markers here. Like I have an extra transient marker here. I've got some extra transient markers in between notes on this loop as well. Seems like there's some up here as well. What I'm gonna do is double click on each of these and then go to flex here. And then after you turn on flex, go from the track editor to the file editor. And here you can see all of the transient markers. And you could double click on these and you can remove the ones that you think are erroneous. Again, I'm just trying to create one sample out of each one of these drum hits here. So I think that will work just fine. I may actually pull this one a little bit forward. So it's up to you, you know, how um, OCD you want to be about it, but I'm fairly OCD, so I'm going to do that. Then I'll do the same thing to this drum loop, same thing. I'll just go ahead and go into the track editor, turn on flex, go back to the file editor. You can see all the transient markers, and I can remove the ones that are sort of erroneous. And there we go. And then one more, I'll do this last synth pattern here in the track editor, make sure that flex is on, go back to file, shows all of our transient markers, and I can just delete these ones. Another way you can do it is you can just turn down the sensitivity up here, like a, with a long loop like this, it might be more helpful to turn down the sensitivity, but it looks like I'm starting to lose other markers here. So I'm just gonna go through and do this manually. You could just sort of haphazardly throw these in and not worry about each note being properly separated. But if I do a little bit of work up front like I'm doing here, this will uh, save us a lot of time in the long run and I'll ultimately end up with a better sounding instrument. If you need to create a new marker, you can just press Command. Just hold Command and that'll bring up the pencil tool. It's right here by default as your secondary tool. I'll just create a marker there. Okay, so I've got all of the transient markers edited in all three of my loops here. Now what you can do is you can right click or control click on each of these and then go down to convert. And then there's an option in here, convert to new sampler track. This used to be called convert to EXS instrument, but now it's called convert to new sampler track. And what you can do here is you can create new zones by transient markers. I think I've shown this before in, in previous Logic tutorials. And what this does is it takes all those transient markers that I took all that time to go in and edit, and it slices up the loop at those transient markers. Now you can choose Drum Machine Designer, Alchemy, or Sampler. I'm gonna go with Sampler, 
And I'm also gonna choose the create one shot zones option. This just means that the full length of each slice will play when you uh, trigger a key. And then you can also set your starting note. If you don't want it to be C negative two, you could tr maybe try putting this on like C zero or maybe even C one. Then I'll just click okay. And what you can see it does is it creates a MIDI region and each one of these notes is a different slice from this original loop. So if, if I go ahead and mute that original loop and I just solo my new sampler instrument track. And now each one of these notes is a different slice from that original loop. So now I can just repeat that same process for these other loops. So I'll do the same for my other drum loop here, just convert to a new sampler track. And there is a shortcut for this. If you just click on the track and then press Control E, that will bring up the dialog for this. Another way to do this is if you already have a loop that's sort of cut up, or maybe you've used the slice at transient markers feature to cut this up into multiple smaller regions, you can also drag over multiple regions and use that same convert to sampler track function. But instead of choosing transient markers, you can say create zones from regions and each region will become a different zone. So if you've got like different parts of different loops that you've manually chopped up, you can create custom sampler instruments this way as well. And there we go. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is mute all of the originals. I'm gonna press H and just go ahead and hide these as well. And now I'm left with just three MIDI regions that have all of the audio data loaded into them in sampler instruments for those three loops. So now we take this a step further. Let's go to our drum topper here. And what I'm gonna do is right click and go to convert and choose that new convert to pattern region function. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna load that entire sequence in the step sequencer. Now as is, it's not very helpful because you have a lot of tied notes. There's gonna be no offsets in here because not everything was quantized directly to the grid. But what you can do is just go ahead and go up to functions and select clear pattern. And now we have a blank pattern that's made out of all of those slices. Each one of those sliced up parts of the loop are now on a different note here in the step sequencer. And now because these have been converted over to sampler instruments, they'll follow the tempo of the project. So 128 maybe is a little too fast for me. I'll go 92 instead. And now this pattern will play back at 92 BPM. So even give it a little bit of swing. And I can even play around with these row parameters. Like maybe I want to add some doubled and tripled notes here. I can use the note repeat function for that. And I've created a completely new drum pattern out of that drum loop in a new and creative way. So instead of just using a loop as is, you're chopping it up and you're creating something completely different with it. Let's try out this second drum loop here. I'll go ahead and convert that down to a pattern region and whoops, there's no option. So the reason why is the pattern is probably too long. This is a similar thing that I introduced in a previous video. So what you have to do is you have to shorten this loop so that it can fit within uh, the standard length or the standard step number in the step sequencer. And fortunately, there's just two drum samples in there, so that's no big deal at all. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and delete all of the notes, except for the first two. It's just two sounds. And now let's convert that over to a pattern region. Uh-oh, it's still not gonna let us. We have to physically trim. Let's try that. So let's convert that to pattern region. There we go. And now I can just stretch this out. I can go ahead and just clear the pattern. And again, it's only gonna show you those two notes that we left in there. And let's hear what that sounds like with the other pattern as well. 
So I've got my main beat, and then I've got a kick and snare layer. So let's do the same thing for our synth loop down here. And I have a feeling that this is not going to, uh, to fit inside a standard step sequencer pattern region. So right here, this long note, I think that's where I want to stop. So I'm going to get rid of all of that. Let's see if we can convert that. Yes, we can. Okay. If you couldn't, you could try cutting it in half and creating two different pattern regions. That's just another way to do it. And I'll go ahead and clear the pattern. And again, now I have all the samples broken up across the keyboard here. With synth loops like this, um, I like to add a little reverb or something just to give them a little space. They don't sound so choppy. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw Space Designer on here. And sure, I'll just use the stock setting. And just by utilizing a few of the notes from that loop, I've created my own custom sort of synth stab or synth hit instrument. Let's see what that sounds like with the beat in. Now, when you're working with individual samples, you do not need to convert to a sampler instrument. There's a much easier way to do this. I've showed this in previous videos, but with an individual sample like this, um, you can just drag this over and just drop it into Quick Sampler, and this will create a custom Quick Sampler instrument out of that single note. So on C1, it's just going to play uh, play this snare sample. So all I'd have to do now at this point is just create a pattern region. You don't have to convert anything. And there's our snare drum very easily layered up. So I've got a bass instrument loaded in here on the ES2. Let's go ahead and just sort of reinforce our beat here with some bass. You know what, let's drop this whole thing down an octave, shift option down, and then put that resolving F sharp up here at the top. That's too low. And there you go, that's how you can use some of the new features in Logic Pro 10.7 to convert loops into editable, sequenceable pattern regions. And you can use this to create your own custom instruments based on loops and samples. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.